All right. Um, so for today's practice, as far as out, it will be uh, Chris Lacey with a hip. Uh, and then back in today will be Justin um, with his groin uh, from yesterday. We'll just be cautious with the reps. It's a 10-10-10 day today, so we're, we're – you know, there's not as many reps in practice today, so I think that'll be good for him to just get out there and kind of stay loose with that and and uh, and feel good there. Larry Borum um, will be back, and then Jason Peters will be out there today as well. Um, like I said, today's a 10-10-10 practice, so we'll uh, we'll do some carded periods where stuff's scripted for for both sides when we're out there. So. Um, That'll be that. And then also just want to bring up today's community day at training camp. Uh, so that'll we appreciate everybody coming out from the community and having that, that day today. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and open up. You plan on Justin playing Saturday? I, I do, yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, you know, again, anything can happen. But from yesterday, I think yesterday giving him – the, the day off to help him was good, and he, he feels good. And kind of like I said to you all yesterday, we want to be able to sacrifice that day of practice to be able to get him right for, for Saturday. And officially, what's the, the plan with Peters in terms of just getting up to speed, mixing him in for reps? Well, how do you get him up to speed as fast as possible? Yeah, um, that'll be what our number one challenge is, is making sure that he feels good um, physically, that mentally he gets in the playbook. Um, you know, he's, he's meeting, meeting new people. He's in a brand new place. You know, he's been in Philly for so long, new coaches, new teammates, new everything. So, but he's anxious for it. And so we'll get him out there and, you know, try to get him a, a couple reps, maybe here or there today, not much, get him out there on Saturday pregame and, and go in there a little bit just to see where he's at. And then I'd say for him, probably the biggest focus will be more of that third game than coming in right away. Uh, this, this next game. Now you talked about yesterday about how much gas you thought he Peters had left in the tank. Mm -hmm. Is there a little bit of curiosity on your own part to see exactly what you got here? Yeah, there is. Um, but I, I do feel good, like a guy that's that athletic, that talented, um, and he cares. You know, I know that he's in a good place right now mentally. So, yeah, there's excitement to get out there. I mean, even talking to the younger guys, we got a young offensive line, and they're they're at a point right now where I think they're kind of eager to to learn from him and to see what kind of advice he has. And that'll be neat watching that thing grow and um, and, and go there. When Justin was out there yesterday, he had a helmet on. A lot of times he was swinging the football. He was pretty engaged. Do you, do you think it's hard for a guy that young to sit out of practice? It seemed like uh, you had to – did you walk over at one point and tell the com – com Yeah, well, he, he – He's he's competitive. He wants to be out there. That, that's the beauty of these guys, is you know. But at the same time, sometimes we got to protect him from himself and make sure that. And he understands it. He gets it. But um, uh, you know, if we were in a situation yesterday, I think Justin would tell you if we were in a situation where that was a game yesterday and um, and he had to play, he would have played. But we wanted to be smart. Matt, with Mitch coming back to town this weekend, um, obviously. Didn't work out how anybody wanted. Mm -hmm. How did you guys leave things with him, and, and will you talk to him before or after the game at all? Yeah, if if he's out there and he's um, he's going to be focused, he's going to be doing his thing. But again, um, we understand that there's the business side and then there's the personal side, and and the respect that I have for him um, as both as a as a person and as a player. I think everybody here has that for him. All his teammates and coaches and. Um, we wish him nothing but the best. When the game's going on, we're going to do everything we can to stop him. Uh, when the game's over, we're going to, you know, um, be friends and 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 have good stories. You know, so um, that's the part of life in the NFL for all of us. But it is a relationship business, and um, I think it's important that you know everyone understands that. Um, you know, on our end, we, we care about him as a person, and we, we know that uh, he's going to compete his tail off all the time to, to do well at quarterback. Matt, what you just expressed about him, I feel like I've heard a lot of people say mm -hmm. the last couple of years while he's been here. How, what was it about him that maintained that level of respect when he struggled on the field? Because a lot of times that usually will determine what people think of you. So a few things I'd say. I think, number one, um, when you, you can earn trust through your players by the way you handle yourself in practice, in meetings, and then on the game day. Uh, Mitch is an extremely tough individual. Um, he, he's, you know, really last year with what he went through with some of the injuries, you know, it, it could have been easy for him to just say, you know what, um, I'm not playing anymore. I'm a little, I got injured and, and I'm, I'm not – uh, I'm just I'm done, and he didn't do that. You know, he fought back, and I think that speaks to his to his teammates and to his coaches. Um, and so, 
I'll always go back to two. Like, you know, the, the time that we spent together uh, in those three years, it, it, it would not be fair to put everything on him. There's a lot of things that went into that. And, um, you know, I know that he's a resilient guy and he's going to do everything he can to be able to uh, have a successful career. Man, you talked about Andy, his knowledge, his experience. He could be ready to go tomorrow if you guys had a game. Yeah. How has that allowed you some flexibility with the reps you can give Justin and maybe the next couple of weeks the reps you can give him knowing that Andy has that comfort? It, it, it helps a lot. It really does. Because... If you don't have that with a guy like Andy, then you're, you're so focused on trying to get him more of those reps and timing. So I think um, you know, that's something that, that we'll, we'll discuss here in the next couple of weeks of just trying to, and it's not going to be a lot. You know, it's not going to be something that's going to be you know, something that's so evident. But every now and then, and, and sometimes, guys, it's not even just in team period. Sometimes it's just getting those reps and timing routes on air in group install. Um, watching film together, stuff like that, that's important. But, yeah, I would say with, because of where Andy's at right now, uh, mentally and physically, Andy had an unbelievable day yesterday. I don't know if you can tell, but he was on fire yesterday. And so that was good to see. And um, I thought it was pretty neat watching Justin in the background before the plays in the red zone putting up his hands for a touchdown because he, he felt he saw he was, on, he was throwing the ball well. So it will help, though, to what you asked. Ben, what would be ideal for Andy on Saturday? Like two series, maybe three series. For Andy? Yeah. No, he'll play a little bit more than that. Yeah, he'll he'll play um, probably you know at least a quarter and a half uh, is is where we're at now. It can always change. I think when you if you get the ball or don't get the ball, that dictates some of it, which was the same thing last week. But um, those two guys are going to get their fair share of reps uh, as we go there with them. Yep. Yeah. Man, before you signed Peters, it sounded like Juan was going to give Borum every chance to win that left hand. Mm -hmm. But does does he move to the right side? What, how does this affect? You still see Borum as a potential starter? Would it be at the right side? What do you do with him now that Peters is here? No, great question. He he's uh, we see him still at the left side and and competing for that left left spot. Uh, and unfortunately, he did have that one day and then was out. So now he's got to catch back up. And he'll get opportunities with uh, with reps in practice, and then with these these preseason games. But that's that's real, you know. He's in. A, I think he's in a great great place, I, mentally, physically, like everything. Now he just needs reps. But we those guys are competing, and uh, we've made that loud and clear. And I think that that he's in a great spot, um, especially you know with with Tevin's situation. This is a good opportunity for a guy like Larry to step up. Does Larry focus more on the right side then? Uh, not, not right now, no. You know, but again, the versatility of him being able to be a, you know, a, a right tackle. I think what you'll see with most of our guys is um, you, we got guys that can move across the board, left side, right side. <laughs> they've, they've kind of been forced to do that. Matt, you've been very complimentary of Sean Desai as a teacher. I'm curious how you would sort of specify his strengths as a teacher to players, and then I know you mentioned as well the, the way he teaches the coaches. He holds guys accountable. You know, that's the number one thing. He, he's not afraid to get on you now in a meeting. If you're not doing it, if it's on tape and you're not doing what he's asking, he doesn't care who you are. There, there's no favoritism. He's going to hold you accountable, and I love that about him. Um, but at the same point in time, you can see the energy and the swag that he has on the sideline, the juice, the fire. The, the, the guys see that. They feel that. And for him, um, you know, when you know what you know, which he knows this stuff inside out, and now you teach every position to these guys in the walkthroughs. And then you go to the game and now super calm on the headset. Super calm. And I love that about him. So, but when you get in the meeting room and you're in there watching the tape, watching the practice, he's not just Mr. Young, nice guy. Like, he'll get on them. And, and it's the same thing with his coaches. He demands a lot out of his coaches. And I think they respect that. It's notable how many players have come on here and, and expressed their energy in him. How do you feel that from your defense as a whole in terms of their level of trust and confidence in him? Yeah, I, I see it. I feel it. Um, again, they know who he is, so that makes it a little bit easier for the guys that have been here. But at the same time, then probably through the players that know him, if there's new players, they're telling him, hey, man, listen, man, this guy knows he's talking about. He's going to put us in great spots to make, make plays. And here's the other thing, too, is I think what's neat about uh, Sean and the way he believe what he believes in is defensively, um, it's not about one person that has to wreck a game. I mean, it's a, it's, he talks about um, playing with 11 guys, right? And you have to have all 11 guys, and you got to play within the system. And if you do that, you'll get your plays. And I love that about what, where he's at. In, in your own career, have you gone from being the good cop to the bad cop? And, and how difficult, if so, how difficult is that for a guy like, like Sean to 
have a certain relationship in one aspect of his job and then all of a sudden have to be different. Yeah, no, that's a, he's in a different role now. And so I think uh, using that analogy of good cop, bad cop, um, some guys that he might have coached at a position have to understand now his role and what he has. And Sean, too. Sean has to understand that, hey, it might be a little different now because guess what? In the end, that falls on Sean, right? So if you're not doing something the way he wants it, um, you, you better make sure you are because it's going to fall on him and there's more of an accountability. So, But Sean, again, going back to the teacher background, he gets that. He knows how to handle every player the same but different. If you know what I'm saying, like there's respect, but yeah, he treats them all different because they're all different, you know, in how they handle it. But did you go through that yourself? Yeah, I did. And what was that like? Yeah, no, I, th I think coming in, I wouldn't say it was just a good cop all the time when I was here. I mean, I was trying to earn the 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 trust from the team when I first got here, and then you set your rules and standards on how things go. I think over time, complacency can sink in, and I think some of that happened, and now it's it's about getting that back. Uh, the players are feeling that, and I think that's real. And uh, it's not so much being a bad cop as it is right now. We believe in accountability. It's plain and simple. And it's not going to be something that we deal with from weeks one to three. That, that thing's going until the very end. And uh, uh, I think right now our building, our coaches, support staff, players, coaches, there's not a single person that does not feel accountable here. And if you're not accountable, you're going to know it. Matt, I realize that everybody always says that every uh, surgery is successful. Yeah. But uh, did anything come out of the surgery yesterday that gave you any clarity as to a timeline as to whether expecting him back this season is still real? No, nothing with a timeline, but you're right. We did get good news that everything went well, and that's about it. You know, so that's that's all we can appreciate and ask for. And now for us, we got like he's got his deal. He's got to work every day, and now we gotta. We know where he's at. Let's continue every day to work to focus on today and just whoever has that next shot, let's roll. And then when the time comes, the time comes, you know, but we, we got good news on him, so that's good. As the roster materializes, how do you balance picking the best 53 with, you know, trying to make sure you got X amount of numbers at this position and that position? Because you got some flexibility at positions like DB, linebacker. How do you balance the best 53 with the numbers game? Yeah, that, that's always the challenge towards the end. And, and now with the way they have you reducing down to the roster every week instead of one big chop, um, there, there's a little bit of a science to it, and there's a feel to it. Um, and then also you have the other guys that get cut. There might be somebody out there that you like that you got to keep an eye on that. So Ryan and his guys do a really good job at looking at that, focusing on that. But day one when we got here, the goal was to have competition and make it hard on us. And so far I think we have that. And if we're cutting good guys because we can't keep them, then we're doing the right thing. Matt, understanding it's still a preseason game, you think your defense will have any extra juice going up against Mitch? No, I don't. I, I, I mean, they might. They might not. They haven't said it if they do. Uh, but I think right now they're all kind of at a spot where they're, they're one, they want to do well for the defense individually. But I don't think it's, you know, there might be a little bit of joking around and having fun with them because they like them. But they're going to, when they're out there, they're going to play. Their, they want to be, be able to do everything they can to make the team and make plays. When did it click that Larry could play the left side? I know you guys are talking about the, the way Boston had it. Like, was it OK? Was it? Um, we probably thought it when we saw the, you know, the weight he lost in OTAs and you saw the personality that who he was. It's hard to tell in, in OTAs with really where you're at without pads. Once we got to training camp, we saw some good things. The individual drills, you saw he was light on his feet. Um, and he was staying extra, putting in extra time, um, you know, eliminating distractions. And then we got to that family fest. I think to me that kind of showed, hey, the stage wasn't too big for him. The first day of pads, out there in front of everybody. That was a different setting for our players. And he did great. And then unfortunately had the, the, the concussion stuff. Juan well, really seemed to like him coming out. I mean, is there, I know this just, I guess what is his view of how that, I mean, is he part of just like an individual project for him a little bit and having that pride of identifying him for the draft and now trying to mold him given the situation on the left side? They are, but, and, and it, it wasn't just like Juan was a big part of it, but it was really, I mean, we were. This is a guy that we could not believe fell to the fifth round. I mean, again, we had second and third round grades on him. So when you think about that, truly, like that's where we see this guy. So even though we got him in the fifth, uh, we would have, you know, I mean, we knew where we had him at collectively as a personnel side and then coaches too. So now that Juan gets him, that's awesome. And now you can just kind of mold him. And every guy, even a guy, you know, a guy like Pig Simmons, right, seventh round last year. And how many reps is this guy getting? How invaluable is that right now? So a guy's out, a Fetty's out. How great is that for the depth of us to have a Fetty or a Simmons be able to get all these reps at right tackle? It's huge for versatility. So, but 
Juan believes in these guys, and so he teaches them that way.